Good evening. Um, I'm Eric Nelson, and I am an educator. Or at least I like to think so. You can decide that for yourself by the end of this talk. Hopefully you'll know one way or the other. The reason that I'm here is not the reason I thought I'd be here uh, when I was a freshman at the U, because my undergrad was in electrical engineering, actually. Uh, so my path to education has been kind of a long and winding path. But starting here in, in, in engineering, I wanted to build products that changed the world. That was my whole goal. In fact, I was very excited about nanotechnology. I thought, you know, nanotechnology, you got nanobots, right? I mean, they're going to take down the big, the big robot people that are going to, never mind. Um, so <laughs> I got into engineering because I wanted to change the world. Because in truth, my driving passion, the thing that wakes me up in the morning, is finding things that don't work and then figuring out what needs to be added to or subtracted from them in order to make them work. And I'm an educator. I, s I work with middle school students. So how did that happen, right? How did I go from electrical engineering, product development, and, and entrepreneurship, solving problems, developing products, to middle school? Well, about this time last year, I was developing thin films in nanotechnology, very awesome, for LEDs, less awesome. <laughs> I jumped ship from that company to begin tutoring high school students in math. And I did this while I was in my right mind. I did it intentionally. Now, it doesn't make any sense, right? But if there's one, if there's one product that needs innovation right now, well, what, what would that be? Education, absolutely. Education is a product and students aren't buying it. And we've, we've seen, I mean, both, both speakers previous um, are referencing these things, so I won't, I won't bore you with the details, but the truth is, is that in my tutoring and in my substitute teaching, the things that I've done to get the worm's eye view, according to uh, Peter Sims' Little Bets, the great book about Muhammad Yunus um, and entering into the slums of Bangladesh, seeing what was wrong in that community, and becoming the father of the microloan by looking outside of the building where he was teaching economics and seeing what was really happening in economics, being able to see what these, what these uh, Bangladeshi women really needed, he was able to institute a new system of microloans. That's what we need to do in education. So everybody who's commenting, including myself, on education needs to step into it. So what we did, or what I did, sorry, just me, one person, what I did is I began tutoring, began substitute teaching. And what I saw, I'm sure you can predict, I saw a bunch of students f infatuated with their grades. And in fact, what it did is it made these students extremely easy to manage. Because all, all we have to do with students these days is put their grades in jeopardy. And they'll do whatever you want, right? But that's so wrong. See, looking at your grade as a passport, as this card you have to swipe to get into this restricted area where your dreams are found, is both, well, it's manipulative and it's false. It's not true. Your grades actually are very, well, they're, they're, they're dumb. They're not important. Not, not, not once you exit the place where the, where the grades become this currency after a certain point. And, and we all know this, right? We all know this. So let me talk to you about some students who don't care about their grades, the ones whose grades suck. They're, they're, they're poor. They're really bad. In fact, they don't even want to talk about them. These are the students who are no longer manipulated by their grades. And let me tell you why these students are exciting. Because when they actually want to learn something, it's legit. Right? They actually want to learn something. They don't want to just pass a test. So let me tell you about these students that I, uh, that I teach at this middle school. These are my students in my computers class. This is where we're developing software, a product. These students are at a whiteboard talking about everything that they know about HTML. They learned this last week. This, this, this student on the left is particularly interested in erasing everybody else's uh, contributions so that he can copy them and claim them for his, for his own. So we got some ethics here. We got some problems with the morals. But 
Look at how interested these students are. These students are not getting graded on whether they learn HTML and CSS and JavaScript. You know what they're doing? They're building a product. They're building a website where their fellow students at, at Venture Academy, where this is being hosted, can add ideas for other products that can then be developed and sold from this school. These students are going to be the webmasters, the developers, that then query these other students and ask them what they want built, software and then hardware. This is our lead. <laughs> He's like this high. <laughs> this guy, at the end of, at the end of all, this, all this brainstorming, this guy comes up, he pushes me out of the way, he says, guys, if we want to do this, we cannot be lazy. We have to have jobs. You have to learn HTML. You have to learn CSS. You have to learn JavaScript. And everybody else is saying, yeah, we have to learn these things so that we can build this product. We got students saying, I'm never going to give up, <laughs> like they know. And we got other people saying, yes, I'm never going to give up. And then we got another student chiming in saying, you, you are the guys that we need on this project. These are sixth and seventh graders. They're excited to build products. Now, why is this important? There we go. Why is this important? These students realized that the makerspace at Venture Academy can be used. It can be used for more than just building, you know, chairs and, and I don't know, probably something much smaller, little boxes with hearts on them. I think I saw a design for that. They can be used for building real products. These students don't care about grades, and they're, they're living in economic conditions in which money is a genuine motivator. These are our low-income students. These are the students who are facing what we call the opportunity gap. They get a crappy education because they don't care about grades. They don't care about, they don't care about the, the primary motivator that we have to get, to get students to read books, answer tests. So here's a question for you. How can we introduce this to every school? How can we make it so that students are not just memorizing things for a test, doing homework that doesn't matter, how can we make it so that they're producing products? What is a product? A product is something that you produce that somebody else consumes. There's value to it, right? You're creating something of value that somebody else wants. Does that sound like a test? Does it sound like homework? Does it even sound like your typical group project? Does it sound like anything that you do in high school? There's, there's, a, there's a difficulty here. For high school students or middle school students to create anything of real value for, that somebody else would buy, they have to develop real skills, you know? Like, beyond just being able to fill out the bubble sheets. Like, there, there are real skills that need to be developed, and that's hard. And I think there's a reason why we haven't done it. Because it's not necessarily something that we can fit in along with teaching, grading tests, Talking to parents, you know, I mean, the teacher's job, I never understood this before I became one, it's really hard. There are a lot of, there are a lot of critics of teachers, right? But it's a hard job. You've got, you got a lot of emotions here. You've got a lot of relationships. You've got a lot of people that don't necessarily like you a whole lot. And there are tons of them everywhere. They totally outnumber you. And it's oppressive, right? So here's what I'm suggesting. This is the one thing I want you to take away. In the schoolhouse, we are doing something that we've been doing for a very long time. We've got lectures, we've got tests administered, we've got some sort of very poor feedback system for, for students to learn whether they're doing a good job or not. It's, it's, it's not very good. But we've been doing something that we've been doing for a very long time. And what I'm suggesting is that teachers actually need to step out of the, the place of the, the, the lecturer and the content deliverer and the assignment grader. They need to step out of that so they can have time and thought space to devote to actually helping these students in pursuing something that they care about 
and developing a product of real value that somebody else would buy. Because it's really, it's it, the, the teacher becoming a coach alongside the student and the student leading their education, well, we can all believe that that's, that's going to be more effective, right? It's, it's a matter of execution and, and impl implementation. It's difficult. So this is my suggestion. And I think this is why it was originally called automated learning before it became that. I rewrote this like six times. <laughs> Here's my suggestion. We need to automate the things that should be automated, like feedback. We've got a lot of online tools. The online tools are not as good as they could be, but they're getting there. And in the next 100 years, they're going to get better. We need to be automating the things that should be automated, grading. And we need to be outsourcing the things that should be outsourced, content delivery. Right? We need to get these teachers out of the place of teaching. Honestly, they need to spend less time teaching. We need to spend less time teaching. We need to spend more time thinking about how each individual student can pursue something of value that they can create for somebody else. And what does this do? It does something amazing. It defines the scope of learning. See, that's one thing that we never do. We create a curriculum. We say you need to learn trigonometry. Why? Because, because you should. Because you're going to need it in college. After college, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right? <laughs> Everything's different after college. We don't even talk about it. Nobody knows anything about it. <laughs> but you'll need it in college. But the thing is, is like, all right, so we, what we've done is we've created this, this set of things that we need to learn, but we have no reason for learning them, right? When we start with a product, we know what the, what the test is, right? We don't, need, we don't need a sheet of paper. The test is whether you built it or not, whether somebody bought it or not, right? It's amazing. It defines the scope. Second thing it does is it creates motivation. When you get a reward for doing something, something that you actually care about, like, not, not just this contrived construct of a grade, something that matters to these students, money. That matters. Matters a lot. Some of them are homeless. Money would change their lives. It, it defines the scope. It gives them motivation. And it's a lot of fun. Creating a product is a lot of fun. Because you're building something. You're creating something that wasn't there before. We need to spend a lot less time doing things that don't matter. And we need to spend a lot more time creating products in the schools, and what are they, what are they going to do when they leave? Well, they're going to keep building products. It's like when, when you're playing soccer or football in high school, the game doesn't completely change when you leave. That's what happens in education. The game complete, nobody gets paid to take tests. Right? Right? <laughs> Let's not fundamentally change the game, right? Let's build products in school because they're going to build products when they leave school. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to automate the things that need to be automated. We're going to outsource the things that need to be outsourced so that teachers can come along the side of the students and help them pursue something that they care about and create real value for the world. Thank you.